Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Suhi Azman. Ho, 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 companies in the news. We are talking about Protasco Berhad on this eve of this long weekend. Close 2% higher at one ringgit 63 Didn't take the news, well, it took the news, but it didn't take it so to heart that basically they had, had secured a three-year contract worth around a pretty sum of 100, well, sorry, 75 million. I almost gave them more than they needed to. <laughs> from Ministry of Works to provide forensic engineering services. And if you close your eyes and listen very carefully, what you can hear is CSI theme music because that's what came to my mind when I talked about forensic engineering services. Yeah, correct. And if we, uh, the, you know these project, these these uh, uh, contracts, right? They actually were doing some civil e equipment, and this is going to be boosted to their earnings, basically. Yeah, of course. So they said that their wholly owned subsidiary had actually relieved that letter of appointment. So what they're going to do, and what we mean by forensic engineering services, is that they're going to do forensic engineering on slopes and slope-related structures for a period of three years. This, I think, is Very massively important. critical work. Do you, I mean, do you look around, especially at like where we're near, we're near Panchala and all this, you see that high rises just seem to keep climbing, right? Correct. And you also see MRTs being cut through these high rises, buildings exactly. and lands and so on. So these are very important things to ensure that there will, be, there will be no further erosion. Exactly. So that's the big thing that you want to look at. You don't want Highland Towers again. And above all, in China, did you see recently? Yes, that it was massive landslide of garbage. Garbage, yes, the, correct. I mean, those, those it, are... It's, it's shocking, isn't it? It is very shocking. It's very tragic, and we don't want that to happen anymore, you know? Yeah, uh, exactly. In, so in Malaysia, yeah, correct. Um, so under the agreement, uh, the Protasco said that the services will be provided with effect from January, uh, January 1st, 2016, and it will be worth 25 million ringgit per annum. It will continue for the sev uh, for three years. Yeah, so the thing is, Protasco, in, so in, in, a, in, in as you can see from the earnings, have managed to turn itself around and in quite impressively, to to be to be correct, uh, up from like something almost from the red back into the back of fifteen point four million. Uh, this is interesting considering top line actually eroded, and I think what that means is they've actually sort of sorted themselves out, right? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you think so? Yeah, I mean they have sorted. I mean earlier this year we have seen a lot of uh, interesting case of boardroom tussle between the Potasco owner, Dr. Chong Kat Peng, and also Te Puyi earlier on. You know, so with all those sad chapters closed, I think it's time for them to gear up for an exciting year. But ahead. this kind of work, right? You better. This kind of work, I really wanted to know: was it done by open tender? You know, oh, that's what, very interesting. Yeah, the, was it done by open tender because of the critical of this work? You know, China has just said they want to put a probe into that landslide. How could it happen? We, touch wood, don't want anything like that. So I'm really curious to know the process. If you're going to basically certify slopes that actually would build your house on, don't you want to know that you can trust the person doing it? Correct. You have one has someone with a very good assault track record. Exactly. So just to wrap it up for you, the Protasco actually bagged a, a 75 million contract from the Ministry of Works to provide forensic engineering services. This includes like slope and slope engineering as well. So they do say it's going to add to their earnings. They have just come out of a very tough boardroom tussle. And as you can see from the earnings, they also just came out of the red. So just moving on to our last for the day, which is YTL Power International. And this broker's call, it closed about 2% or about 3 cent higher to 1 ringgit 48. The stock has not actually suffered too badly. It's uh, fallen by 10% since early October. In my, in my eyes, when you talk about YTL Power, I always think it's a defensive stock. You know, it's a stock that you buy for dividends. Yeah, I mean, uh, as with any capital intensive stocks, they all the strategic assets, power assets, you know. Yes, so they power would, and water. Power and water, so that would be very good for them. And today, and on the news front, right, they actually has bagged or embarked on a 2.7 billion US dollar one uh, coal-fired power plant in Chirebon, West Java, in uh, Indo Indonesia. Yeah, exactly. It's an interesting little thing because apparently they sent a media release around Yes, but and not a bursa announcement. <laughs> not a bursa announcement. CIMB, we're looking at two reports today to see what they say about it. CIMB maintains an ADD, target price 170. MIDF is also neutral with 160. I think this is, all this means is that they think this is per course. It's normal for them. And uh, so MIDF did make this interesting point that the cost ain't cheap, you know, it ain't cheap. Ain't nobody got time for that. Implied 8.8 .8 million per megawatt construction is not cheap if you benchmark it against the others incurred for especially a Malaysian power, power plant.
Yeah, yeah correct. And, and, and at the same time, you know, this is going to, because this, this project will be funded by cash and also borrowing, right, it will be high gearing. The gearing is going to rise to as high as 1.8 times to from 1.1 times earlier, assuming that funding this will involve around 557 million in additional financing costs. Yeah, and this is the flip side to what the research researchers were saying for what TNB paid for their part in Turkey. They said that one was definitely very comparable to back home. So you wonder whether what is the difference when it comes to something like Indonesia. I mean, CIMB, like you said, uh, it's like CIMB research. They also think they maintain a higher future ROE, return on equity. They think that's going to be the case for them. It's a positive surprise, but it wasn't positive enough to shock them into changing their targets. Yes, correct. They, they still maintain the targets though. And, and CIMB said that, you know, uh, interest income alone made 30% of the YTL's power uh, pre-tax profit and the plan is expected to commence in 2021. So therefore, you know, they might have a negative impact in, uh, to the earnings in the shorter terms where we're going to see earnings to be uh, recognised by 2021. Well, it's something that you expect them to do because don't forget YTL Power International I think their their IPP is almost up, even if they get an extension. How many years can they get an extension? They've already paid everything back on when it comes to the capital amount of it. So they have to go overseas. And Indonesia, where because it's an archipelago, there is issues with power. There is issues with interruption. So it's a great market to go in. If you can get through the mountains and the absolute bonkers amount of red tape and challenges as well, what do you think? Yeah, I think that would be a, a very good thing for them to do as well. You know, that they try to penetrate into something that is largely well, complex. Yes, while earnings aren't looking great, I think they are also feeling a little bit of an impact from some of their things. But we'll have to take a look at how that goes. Anyway, so just to wrap it all up for you, we're looking at YTL Power International. It's our broker's call for today. They decided that they wanted to go and do their second foray into Indonesia. So we said what the analysts are saying about it. CIMB, both CIMB and MIDF were, were a happy but meh kind of way. Maintain ADD with TP was 170 was CIMB. MIDF was maintained also neutral with target price of 160. That's all that we have today for Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Suki Azmat. Of course, we're off for the next two days. The paper's off for the next two days. But the edge markets are still going to, well, run. But there will probably no be up, no, no updates till Monday. Uh, the weekly is already out, by the way, because it's a short week. Of course, you can always pick up the daily. But regardless of that, wherever you are, have a really good long week. And if you celebrate it, Merry Christmas.